Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. Today I'd like to talk about my top five easy heart-shaped philodendron because there are a lot of heart-shaped philodendron and believe me, they are not all created equally. Some of them are an absolute nightmare and I regret buying them into my shop. There is a mixture of both climbing philodendron and crawling philodendron in this video. So depending on what you prefer, there is probably something for you. And when I say these plants are easy, guys, I literally mean they're easy. The amount of neglect that some of my plants get in my shop because I cannot look after them because I have 7,000 of them. Literally, if they weren't easy, they would be dead. It's that simple. I know that sounds dramatic, but it is that simple. So without further ado, we're going to get into my five easy heart-shaped philodendron. The first plant is not going to come at any surprise to anybody because I don't shut up about this plant on my channel because I think it's absolutely fantastic. But the first plant I'd like to talk to you about today is none other than the Philodendron Gloriosum. And my goodness, what a plant, what a plant. This plant can take anything you throw at it. It can take underwatering. It can take overwatering. It grows really fast. It sizes up well. You don't have to feed it like a monster for it to size up. It will be quite okay. It comes in different forms and I do find by the way, that all of the forms are pretty much the same. So you can get it in a form where there is minimal veining on the leaf. You can get a white vein. You can get a dark form. You can get rounded forms. Honestly, they're all kind of the same. I haven't personally noticed any difference of care between the different plants. They're really easy to propagate if that's what you'd like to do. I did mention this in last week's video, but essentially because Philodendron Glorosum is a crawler, you can grow it along a set of pots and allow it to root in to those pots. You can then cut the stem of the plant and then you can still leave it there and let them root even more. You can eventually separate them once they have all new little growth points and then you have about five plants and you can sell them. So it's a great plant in terms of making some cash off as well. All in all though, it's just a classic plant. It looks great. It just looks excellent in the collection. It's not variegated. You can get variegated ones. It's not variegated though, so you don't have to worry about maintaining that. My Gloriosum respond well to zero feed. They respond well to a lot of feed. There doesn't really seem to be too much of an issue looking after these. The more humidity you give them, I do find that they get a bit bigger and a bit plumper, but you can still grow them in an environment of about 50%, probably even 45%. Spider mites do enjoy Gloriosum a little bit, I've got to say, so do be careful but if you just check your plant once a week and take any precautions necessary just keep on it with your pest control things like that then you should be absolutely fine i wouldn't say this plant is an absolute magnet or anything like that another really easy plant just so happens to have gloriosum in it what is this plant it is none other than philodendron glorious which if you are not aware it is essentially a hybrid of philodendron gloriosum and philodendron melanochrysum now i have to tell you that Although the plant is easy, one of its parents is not. And that would have to be the Philodendron Melanochrysum. I know it's not a heart-shaped Philodendron, so there's no point talking about it, but I have to put it out there that Melanochrysum, though they are easy, to get a mature one and to get a good-looking one is actually a little bit difficult. They're easy care in and of themselves, but to get them looking amazing takes a little bit of work. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the Philodendron Glorious now then. I therefore would suggest that it's easy because of the Gloriosum parentage within the plant. It is a classic climbing plant though, so that's great news if you want a climber because perhaps you're short on space, perhaps you don't want a big long plant that crawls along the surface. This is definitely a nice one. It has a beautiful, beautiful coloured leaf. It emerges kind of bronzy and then it turns into kind of a dark green, almost with a tinge of bronzy brown in there. It's really, really nice. The veins are a little bit muted. I would argue that depending on what Gloriosum is used, that maybe could vary, I suspect, as there are a lot of forms of Gloriosum out there, but it is a very nice plant. And actually, although its parent is Philodendron melanochrysum, and that does not size up very easily, I have to tell you that this one actually does. If you put it on a pole, you don't need a ton of roots. It will start to size up. Just keep it adhered to the pole. Now, obviously, aerial roots would be better. They would also allow you to propagate it better. But can it size up without? Yes, absolutely. Give it decent light. Give it a bit of a boost with feed if you feel like it's not sizing up. But you should be absolutely fine. Honestly, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous plant. When I do take propagations of my plants, they tend not to fail. They tend to just take first time. I don't really get any losses at all. It's a really, really nice plant. And I think when it's mature and it gets really nice big ears on it, oh, it's so impressive. It's so impressive. It's beautiful. 
The next plant in my top five easy heart-shaped philodendron is one that is arguably, I think it's got the most going on. I wouldn't say it was the most popular, although at one point it definitely was. I think a lot of people enjoy this plant because honestly, it's quite a beautiful hybrid. So what plant am I talking about? I'm talking about the philodendron splendid, which is essentially a hybrid of, let me get this right, I believe it's a hybrid of philodendron vericosum and philodendron melanochrysum. Oh, my goodness. It has really beautiful veinage coming through the front, it's velvety, it's heart-shaped, and it has a little bit of red blush on the back of the plant. This is another plant as well, like the Glorious, that sizes up quite well. I really enjoy this plant. Now, it's interesting because I wouldn't really argue that either parent of this plant is amazing at certain things. For example, Philodendron varicosum happens to be a spider mite magnet. And when I say magnet, I do mean magnet. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the hairy stems. I have no idea, but spider mites love that plant. Melanochrysum doesn't really suffer from that, but as I mentioned before, it doesn't size up quite as well as what you would think it would. That said, these two plants honestly created a marriage in heaven because my goodness, these plants are tough. Whenever I've imported these plants, they've come in all floppy, literally 24 hours in water, and they have plumped right back up. They are tough as nails. They can take being underwater to quite a high degree. They can live in water to an extent. They are so, 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 so tough. They are unbelievable. They're not as easy, though, to propagate as perhaps Philodendron Glorious, for example. The cuttings take when you take them. It's just if you're someone that's worried about aerial roots, depending on your humidity, you might struggle to get them. Can it be done? Of course it can. I just think if you really are worried about propagating it, I think wait till you get some good aerials. But honestly, this plant is tough as hell. It's just tough as hell. And I'm sure people that own them would likely agree. They can be prone to spider mites slightly more. Maybe that's due to the very coarse element, but still a great plant. And they just look awesome. They look so, so, so beautiful when they grow. Honestly, it's one of my favorites. And when I lived back at my old flat, I think I have a picture on my Instagram of basically the glorious and the splendid together And they just look excellent and they looked excellent with small leaves because I didn't have great humidity in my flat I only had about 55% something like that. I just kind of stopped caring So I didn't get the best growth out of them, but even then they still looked fantastic. They looked absolutely beautiful So I do recommend it. I really do gorgeous plant. Not only that, but I think they're reasonably obtainable at the minute. To be honest, as is everything on this list, it's not going to set you back a ton of money. Okay, the next plant on my list that is surprisingly okay to take care of. Now, I've probably changed my opinion on this plant a little bit. I do think it's easy, but I do think it's got a lot of drawbacks. But I have noticed that different varieties of this plant seem to be a little bit better than others. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the Philodendron Pastazanum. Now, I'm going to show you a slightly different Pastazanum because I actually think it's prettier. I think it's known as the Pastazanum Silver or something like that, but it's essentially a silvery version. Now, now it could be a hybrid, I'm not entirely sure, so please take what I'm saying with a pinch of salt. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to refer to it as a pastazanum. So this plant is a crawler and it can grow a little bit gangly if you let it, but if you keep it well fed, it should hopefully stay on the shorter side. The regular pastazanum can get a little bit leggier, I find, so that honestly pushes me to say that possibly the pastazanum I'm showing you is a hybrid, but honestly, if you can get your hands on one of these, I really would. They look so much nicer and there's so much less fuss than the regular pastazanum. I don't actually keep the regular pastazanum because I don't really like them. I keep something similar, which which we will get onto in a moment. But I think they're great plants. I think they're easy. I think they're very desirable as well. And I don't see these plants around that often. I do think it's a somewhat neglected plant and I don't get why. If you could tell me why in the comments, I would genuinely be curious to know because I don't really understand why they're not loved. I mean, look at the one I'm showing you. Don't get me wrong, it's huge. I think I do actually have some footage of a smaller one as well. So I'll pop that in for you now. But I think they're just great plants and I don't have any problems growing them at all. So if you're considering expanding, your heart-shaped collection and you think, okay, well, what is there? I do want something that's low fuss, but I want something that looks really pretty. Honestly, I do think this is a good one to go for. I really, really like it. And I'm very proud of that specimen, that larger one. I'm very, very, very proud of it. And I don't really want to cut it when it grows over the pot, but I think I'm probably going to because I can't justify having something huge. I don't know. Let me know what you think I should do with that. So, very similar 
to the philodendron pastazanum or the philodendron pastazanum silver or whatever you want to call it is the philodendron mcdowell now these had a little bit of a value attached to them last year actually they have come down a little bit they're a little bit more affordable but they still definitely have a little bit of a value to them possibly more than other things like gloriosum and things like that i think that's probably just due to the history that surrounds them but they are quite a good plant to grow now, the only caveat I will say about this plant, and I know that everyone probably agrees with me, is how leggy these plants can actually get. So this plant is actually a hybrid of Philodendron gloriosum and Philodendron pastazanum. And you can kind of see that, to be honest, when you look at the plant, you can kind of go, okay, that's where it gets it from. You can see it's a crawler. You can see there is a little bit of white bainage there, but you can also see the kind of negative side effect that I personally believe that Philodendron pastazanum offers, and that is the long petioles. That hasn't been grown leggy. That's actually been grown just underneath a window. Believe me, that plant has had all the light in the world. This just happens to be how it grows. So I appreciate this plant is not quite for everybody. But the leaves do actually offer something quite unique. They turn out to be very, very pillowy. That's the best way I can describe it. They're very, very pillowy and quite beautiful. And I think that's a really nice advantage over some other heart shapes. And be it that they are a little bit gangly sometimes, the propagation you can get on these, I mean, these grow quick. If you were to cut these and propagate, you will have new plants quite quickly. They root quite quickly and they grow new growth points very quickly. This is not a difficult plant to produce and sell on if that's something you'd like to do. They're very, very easy. All of the plants on this list kind of are, to be honest. So if you're looking at this plant going, hmm, that's a little bit gangly for me. I totally get it. You're probably better off going with the Gloriosum in that point of view, or perhaps the Silver Pastazanum, which can still get a little bit leggy, by the way. It's not completely compact. I know the one I've shown you is quite compact. They can get a bit leggy still. So you might be better off with the Gloriosum in that event. Or of course, if you prefer the climbers, you can go for either the Glorious, which is very beautiful, or the Philodendron Splendid. Now I have to say something before we close this video and you may have noticed the common denominator running through all of these plants. So if I had to tell you what the easiest plant on this list being that I think is it in a hybrid with nearly every plant on there but one? Yes it is. The Philodendron Gloriosum guys. I go on about it so much because it is actually a classic and my goodness it is easy. It is so easy and it hybridizes well so if you want to create hybrids you can do it really well. Clearly, clearly we have it in Glorious, we have it in Splendid, we have it in McDowell. That's an excellent track record, especially since they made it into this video. So if you have absolutely no idea what you want to get, I probably still recommend Gloriosum the most, if you can handle crawlers anyway, because not everyone likes that, and I do appreciate that. Well, that was my top five easy heart-shaped philodendron. These are philodendron that I honestly think nearly anyone can take care of. They don't need a ton of humidity to at least grow. You might just keep them smaller than maybe what they, you know, what nature intended for them, but they are very, very easy. They're also very accessible. They propagate well, and you could probably make a little bit of cash on them. So for that reason, I think they are fantastic, and that is why they have made it into my list. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It really helps me out. It lets me me know that I make videos that you enjoy and if you'd like to see any more of my content and you are not already subscribed I would love it if you could do so. That's it from me guys I hope you have a fabulous weekend and I will see you in next week's video. Bye guys!